Hi everybody, I'm Lilo and you're watching Headbangers Lifestyle. Uh, my guest today is Joey Tempest from the band Europe. Welcome. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, you're very welcome. <laughs> yeah. So, how are you doing? I'm alright, I'm, I'm good. Just out doing promotion for a new album and uh, hooking up with you guys in some strange boxes and stuff. I don't know what's going on. Exactly. Know. Well, we're going to do something fun indeed. This is uh, the black box, the Headbangers Lifestyle mystery box. Okay. I'm not going to tell you what's in it. All right. You just take a look, grab something, and oh, okay. let's talk. Do you want me to do that? Do you want me to have a look? Oh, all right. Should we take this? Wow. Oh, that's set in two. Okay. That's cool. Um, oh, man. Well, of course, we have to show this, the new album for Europe. Amazing. The very most interesting Europe album ever, I think. Yeah. So it's War of Kings, that's the yeah. new album. Uh, can you tell a little bit more about that one? Um, yeah, we just recorded it in Stockholm with Dave Cobb, um, a really cool producer, musician as well, and he helped us out a lot to achieve what we think is one of the most interesting Europe records. It's got a vibe, it's atmospheric, classic rock, warm sounding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, that's so funny, there's a connection with all this stuff, you know. Let's exactly. Zeppelin 4 maybe even more, but this is great as well. Mm -hmm. So Let's um, Zeppelin is something you listened to when yeah. you were young? Yeah, Black Dog was one of the first songs I heard on the radio. Um, and really blew my mind the way he was singing, Robert Plant. He's, I've been a fan of Robert Plant since... I wanted to look like him as well, as you oh, might really? think. Yeah, yeah. You may have noticed I tried in the 80s. <laughs> I came close, but not as cool as him, though. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, Robert Plant, uh, I've been, even his solo career, I mm -hmm. went backstage, I've been lucky to meet him a few times, and uh, yeah, I followed his solo career around the Manic Nirvana albums, and yeah, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Yeah, and yeah. it's still an influence on the yeah, well, sound of your what's the, Yeah, what's interesting about these albums is they have a vibe all the way through, and they have an emotional journey, and that's what we want to do with War of Kings, the same as these guys did, especially on the Septim Four, maybe, and... Mm -hmm. Machine Head with the Purple and the Obsession with UFO and you know they find a vibe all the way through and you get caught in it and you love the whole album. That's what mm -hmm. we wanted to create, a whole album, not just single songs. Mm -hmm. Just like yeah. one big sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And mm -hmm. a unique sound as well. We used mm -hmm. the Mellotron a lot and, and a keyboard and we used the Hammond organ and more mm -hmm. than usual. And Yeah, we had a lot of fun in this one. Yeah, it sounds very 70s kind yeah. of vibe. Like we warmed everything up. We, we're in a brand new studio so we borrowed... Oh? Two suitcases of old compressors, microphones, and, and uh, came from another studio in mm -hmm. Gothenburg that's uh, run by the guy from Soundtrack of Our Lives, uh, one of the guys in Soundtrack of Our Lives, and he lent us all this warm-up warm, warm -up equipment. You can't just record to digital mm -hmm. without warming things up with, these, yeah. with the gear these guys used. Yeah. You know? So it was all the old-fashioned way, the whole recording? Yeah, it's pretty much recorded everything live. We did mm -hmm. fix some stuff afterwards, did some overdubs afterwards, but... Everything was done in two weeks yeah. with all the equipment and, and uh, yeah, and then we mixed it and mastered it in Nashville. It was mastered analog as well, so it's very much a classic rock sound record. All right, so we expect a lot then yeah. in the future. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let's yeah, see what else you got. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, you want to take out the things? Yeah, maybe it's, wow. it's handy for you. Wow. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is cool. So beer. we noticed uh, <laughs> Europe is it's doing good beer. beer. <laughs> well, we did it for the love of it, because after shows we like to have beer and talk about really? the gig and everything. Oh, okay. This is a small brewery out where we live, and um, we were there. We, we tried the hops and the malt, and we developed it with them. And we're actually quite pleased with our taste. So but hopefully we can sell it in more places yeah. than Sweden in it's the only, future. Yeah. only available I think in, you can order it online and stuff in Sweden. and. Hopefully it'll spread. We really like it. So. It's called Demon Heads. Yeah, Demon Heads. And that's one of your songs? Yeah, one yeah. of the songs from uh, the Bag of Bones album. Yeah, yeah. this was the former album. So, but who came up with the idea of going into a beer? I, I don't know. We've talked about that for years. And, really? Um, but everybody's doing wine. And yeah, wine we didn't really. Or... We talked about that, but nah, we didn't really want to get into that. We like, mm -hmm. we like to have a few beers after the show, and that's why we are connected to it. So we like it, you know. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why. Right. So this is the best beer you can drink? Yeah, it's one of the better ones, actually. Mm -hmm. Man, it's really good. Okay, there you go. have to taste it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, little Brits, and I don't know about that. I, I, it, it, there's another oh. show. That's okay. I mean, I lived in London for many, many, many years. This yeah. is okay, this one. But th there's one called The Mighty Boosh, 
that's my all-time favorite British comedy. It's got a mm -hmm. sort of uh, sketch show. It's really, really, really mm -hmm. cool. The Mighty Boosh. Check it out. <laughs> but living that in remind me. But yeah. you li st are still living in, in yeah. England, right? Yeah. I lived there for a long, long, long yeah. time. Yeah. So um, I was wondering, living that long in England, uh, is it now for you uh, easier to express yourself in your lyrics, learning the language yeah. better, or? It started a couple of albums ago, and I realized I dream and think in English and stuff now. I lived abroad longer than I lived in Sweden now. Mm -hmm. So do you feel more uh, yeah. an Englishman now? Or still yeah, Swedish? well, I miss London now. That's the tricky part when people ask, do you, do you have homesick? And I think the, the line is around 15 years. Mm -hmm. If you live in another country around 15 years, you start changing. You start missing the new country instead. So yeah. that's what it was okay. for me. So when we recorded War of Kings in Stockholm, I was sort of missing the food and the lifestyle and everything from, from England. So it takes yeah. a lot of years. The first 10 years is quite tricky because you can wake up in the middle of the night and think, oh, I'm missing something. It's, oh, it's just, there's a pull to your own country. Yeah. It changes. Okay. You, can sur you can survive it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is Rival great. Sons. That's, well, that's the second album. Um, yeah, you just mentioned actually uh, uh, Dave Cobb, the yeah. producer, who yeah. worked with Rival Sons, and you were very yeah. amazed by his Yeah, I, I like the way they work too, these guys. Yeah. They, work, they work the proper way. They record everything with old equipment and they, they write in the studio. They do like they did in the 70s, but these are young guys and they're mm -hmm. doing a great job. Yeah. He's a great singer and songs. Are yeah. and, and, and Dave is very instrumental, we've realized, because Dave, when he worked with us as a producer, he got involved as a band member. He, he co-wrote a few things, he came out with string lines, he, you know, he, he created a vibe, he helped us perform even better. So we know now how they do their albums too, but yes, we heard Rival Sons and we thought that sounds amazing, yeah. let's find out who that producer is. And we called him up and he was like, yeah, I used to listen to Europe, I used to play drums to Europe when I was a kid, so yeah, I'd like to produce you guys, so that was that's, great. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, so that's cool. No, oh, Swedish chocolate, is it? Yeah. That's Kex. Yeah. Uh, well, we have a, a place called Marabou around where we grew up. I don't know if this is that one. But I there's Marabou. That one. Yeah. yeah, Marabou. Yeah. And Marabou, that's actually yeah. that we're the same small town. So that was a lot of people that we knew worked in that big factory of chocolates. Okay. We have a lot of sort of yeah. connections with But I was wondering if, if food and having a, a healthy lifestyle is very important to you, getting a bit older and staying in shape. Um, sports, yeah, so. I, I'm sort of a period kind of guy. Sometimes I just let go and write music and eat and drink as much as I want because I, mm -hmm. I don't want to have any, I just want to feel free. So I'm more like, but, but when uh, an album release or a tour comes up, then yeah, I do start walking and jogging a bit and taking care of what I eat a bit more mm -hmm. because you get really tired as a singer and, and drummer especially drummers and singers you know there's a, there's a lot of physical activity involved in, in the tour yeah. Yeah. and uh, both me and Ian the drummer at Europe we, we talk about this a lot and we try to prepare for the tours mm -hmm. but I can have periods when I just simply you know go for it, anything okay. <laughs> I love it I love those periods Good. But I I can't have a tour coming close. You know? Yeah, but on t you hear on tour, uh, yeah. you get a lot of crap food. How do you try yeah. to avoid that? Uh, yeah, is you, it easy or you can't really? You I can't, mean, no. So <laughs> good intentions. You know, the first part of the tour, everybody walks around. Nobody's drinking alcohol. And yeah. eat, oh, you're eating a salad today, are you? Yeah, great. The end of the tour, people walk around with a beer and sound checks. <laughs> like, All right, let's have a so, burger, <laughs> pizza, pizza. <laughs> so everything it begins with good intentions, but. Yeah. You're right, it's so tiring yeah. when you're out there that you start wanting energy from anything, anything yeah. you can eat. So. Yeah, and irregular schedule yeah. times yeah. is funny. You try your best. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. it. Well, you still look good. So, yeah. oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. Deep Purple, course. I guess. Also Made in Japan, is it, that's probably the most. Oh, it's great that you have. This is yours. Yes. Oh, man, this is so cool. This is a cool <laughs> record. It's the most important record in, in uh, our careers, uh, Europe's career, I think. The way uh, Blackmore plays on this one, and Ian Pace, um, John Lord, of course, um, the whole band. This was so. We listen to this every every Friday and Saturday when we meet up and and uh, and dream about touring like these guys. Uh, it was amazing. We've obviously met a few of them now and and talked how they recorded it. They were in Japan mm -hmm. and recorded two, three different shows, and they cut oh. it together. It was only meant to be a Japanese release first, but then somebody in England said, no, we have to release this. And then it became a, a true classic. Mm -hmm. The next, uh, they did another one called Made in Europe. And that's where we came up with the name for Europe. 
That's a good one. Because we listened to this first a lot, mm -hmm. but then they did Made in Europe, which we, we didn't like it as much, but we did like it. And one day I was sitting on a train station and I was thinking, what could be good? Please welcome tonight on stage. And I was trying different names and I, I remember Made in Europe. I was like, Europe? Yeah. yeah, that could work. It worked. Yeah, it works. <laughs> I mean, any name works if yeah. the music's all right, you know. Uh, um, That's a good one. But yeah. when I presented it to the guys, I had to get them really drunk first. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why? Because I knew they'd be like, Joey, what the? <laughs> but they were real drunk and they said, mm, okay, let me think about that. And, and then they got even more drunk and at the end of the night said, that's not too bad, it'll be yeah. all right. They get used to it. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. I think this is a homage to the, the hair big spray. hair. Yes, Ooh. big hair. <laughs> so when, yeah. did that you was feel my... good about stopping with the big hair or oh, and, and yeah. I don't know. change I... the look? That was when I was a kid. I used to see Robert Plant, and I thought he looked so cool. And, yeah. and I wanted to look like him, so that was basically my first attempt, you know, to have a yeah. sort of stage look. And but it was all right, you know. But, yes. Uh, we grew up in that age. I mean, we grew up in in the uh, late seventies when all the footballers had long hair, and it was kind of my mum was completely, you know, losing it because we didn't oh. want to go to a hairdresser. We would run away, you know. <laughs> so she had to cut herself in the end. It was all the yeah, walking. So, but uh, yeah. yeah. And then there's live albums, of course, and and, w and these. This is also a live album, of course. So these yes. these uh, these two albums are very important for us. And also there are other live albums from the late seventies and earlier eighties, maybe Tokyo Tapes. Yes. Scorpions was Scorpions. very important, and mm -hmm. You for Strangers in the Night. I think those four, uh, those two, and these two were very instrumental in us because we like to hear the audience as well. Yes. And with these records you could get the best songs. It was yeah. almost like a greatest hit. Yeah, it was. So that's why we love them. And the producers in the band spend some time on them as well. Mm -hmm. They actually put some love in them. Yeah. These days with live albums, eh, they just record it very simple, quick and release it. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of flat sounding and they may not even redo. We know now that some of this is, they, they overdubbed and fixed some of this. I don't know so much about this. I think this is pretty straightforward, but mm -hmm. they cut it from different shows. Um, we know that there was some tampering and fixing with these live yeah. albums, but they were still amazing. Yeah. Still amazing. So why was uh, Thin Lizzy for you guys uh, a big example? Uh, I know that the, the, the first drummer of Europe was a huge fan. He used to have Thin Lizzy on this jean jacket. And him and me, we traveled to UK from Sweden, 24 mm -hmm. hour boat ride, and we were only 16 or something. And so, then Lizzie at Hammersmith, and we were kids, first time in England, first time, no, it wasn't the first time in England, but it was the first time going on our own. <laughs> and that was an impact, big impact, and, and John Norum loved Thin Lizzie as well. Um, so it was the melodic guitar solos and the singing and the melodies, and also the slight bit of humour. We used to go and see Thin Lizzie play, and Phil Linnett always was talking, he had some jokes with the audience, he had a great rapport with the audience. And, I used to stand there in fifth row. Like, Whoa! <laughs> and he made it look possible. He made he made it look like it's something that you can do too. You know, yeah. as a kid, we were like, yeah, it looks simple. He has fun. Okay, you know, we can do this too. So it was a great. That's why it started for yeah, you, sort of. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know why you have this one. Well, it's this... uh, rock star. Like oh yeah. Just it's, oh, it's a... I have seen only parts of this. I haven't really seen the movie, but but uh, the guys in the band told me about it. Mm -hmm. Some of them liked it, I think. But was it something, as a kid, you were thinking about? Watching all these shows and, and thinking, I want to be a rock star too? Uh, I don't know how it happened. I was an interest in music and there was a guitar player and the drummer in my class. And we formed the first band. We were all, we were 10 years old. That's and, pretty young. Yeah. yeah. And before that I learned to play guitar and my mum said I scribbled down words even when I was 8 or 9 in my room. So songwriting was I heard David Bowie and Elton John on radio when I was mm -hmm. very young, five, six, seven, eight, already there, and they were just, I was hooked with the voices and the melodies. Space Oddity, I remember hearing. Mm -hmm. And I was just mesmerized. It was just an interest. And my sister had a guitar and a piano at home, because see, she was going to learn, but she didn't continue it, but it was there for me to pick up. Yeah. But my parents didn't know. So they oh. just caught me playing. and. All of a sudden, I sat after school. My, my dad said I played before school, and I played immediately when I came home. So I picked up what my sister started, 
without anybody knowing. Mm -hmm. So it was just a love for it, I think. So for you, it was not really to be a rock star? No, songwriting an and interest yeah, in music yeah. and melodies. Yeah. Then all that came in, I had to learn to sing loud. I was very nervous singing loud. I was so nervous oh. the first time. Oh, I had to really tour and, and work at my, my confidence on stage and singing and everything. It took a lot of gigs and stuff. I had a sense of melody. I could sing a little bit, but mm -hmm. I was very, very nervous. Um, first TV show, my leg was shaking, but they, they cut the camera here, so you can't see <laughs> it. It was, it was so it was crazy. Yes, yeah. but um, but I no. So I wasn't. It wasn't like oh, I'm going to be great rock star. No, no, it wasn't. No. I had to work on. I had it. to work on yeah. it. Yeah, but the look that I saw Zeppelin and, and this. If you're in a band, you need to think of the entertainment part as well. You know, yeah. people pay a lot of money, they travel to see a show and everything. So I started to realize, you know, it's great if they get great music and great show to look at. Mm -hmm. So it was that as well, to create yeah. the persona, Tempest. And mm -hmm. So off stage you were maybe a bit different than on yeah, stage, I'm kind of, think? I would, yeah. yeah, I think so. I think, yeah. yes. People that know me now in, around London and my, my son's school, they see this kind of calm guy walking around and uh, with Jamie mm -hmm. and my son and, and then they go and see a show. It's like, what is that the same guy? Yeah. yeah <laughs> so you're pretty rock on stage. You're yeah, yeah, moving yeah, yeah. and yeah, very energetic. I love it. The music mm -hmm. just takes me places all the time. But so it's very different. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and you got some more stuff? Yes. Well we have at the beginning of course. Yes. Soul of the solo years. Your solo album? That's the last one, the third one I did. I but did you three. went you went solo after the Break up with yeah. Europe. You fe you felt a need to continue as a musician. Yeah, I wanted to learn more about it because what we were exposed to was the Lindsay White Snake Rainbow, Deep Purple, etc., and everything, and that mm -hmm. was great. We loved it, but I realized there must be more stuff because I started hearing other things on the radio. Mm -hmm. I always pick up things, and I started to Jackson Brown. I heard Van Morrison's t early stuff, and then Neil Young and all that Dylan stuff that I've heard before, but never really. Then I bought all the albums out. I went mm -hmm. to see them live. So I wanted to learn more about lyrics and, and about music. But it was everything. It was Randy Newman, Johnny Mitchell, it was uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Both guys. It could be anybody that was, in, that was loving writing music and lyrics. So I picked up a lot of things during the three solo albums. And mm -hmm. it was more like a learning thing for me. Yeah. So, but for now, uh, you, you. I was don't missing feel... Europe more and more. Yeah. You don't feel like doing another solo album? No. It's now that, that was just that yeah, time? Yeah, that was that time. Yeah. Okay. I, don't, I, I don't think if... Maybe, you should never say never, but maybe. Yeah. Maybe one day. yeah. So this was the one we started with. The comeback album, yeah. eh? Um, Very, it is a bit dark, a bit raw. Yeah. We wanted to work with a producer that we knew that was a friend of the band, so Kevin Nelson came back. Otherwise, we change producer all the time because we just yeah. want to keep it fresh, you know? Yeah, yeah. But this, this it was is, important yeah. because John came back and had written quite a few songs for this, mm -hmm. detuned guitar. So that was a new thing for me as a writer, so I started to think, okay, I'll detune the guitar to D or, a, or a, maybe even a B tuning or something and start writing. So that was the interesting thing. started writing in different tunings and brought the lyrics with me that I've learned about. And mm -hmm. The other guys had toured a lot with Glenn Hughes. And so it was a new band starting for me. Yeah. So the and real then, you guys, the real yeah, be yourself on this album. Absolutely, yeah. and, and the, 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 there was a few decisions we made that it's going to take a long time to come back, and it's going to be a long yeah. journey. We knew that, but we also said let's form our own company, let's license our music, let's not, let's own everything, let's plan everything ourselves. So we started really a more of a, a company, you know. Yeah, take everything and in your own yeah, hand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, and also we said let's not listen to any outsiders whatsoever, and let's change producers because otherwise. They will have too much influence on yeah, us. Yeah. So we, we always take twists and turns and it's working for us because we get excited every album we make. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's a bit different. You know? Yeah, that keeps yeah. the mind fresh yeah. and yeah. nice to so, continue. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Pretty much it. What's this? That, uh, those, yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a TV show that was on when we were kids. Yeah, maybe you can show the camera. Yeah. yeah. You know, you all have these when you're very young and, and there's uh, this uh, funny TV show. It was quite good, actually. Yeah. So how do you look back on your childhood in general? I was quite... I, 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 I'm quite positive about it. My yeah. mum was a very positive, very positive force. Shows like, you know, yeah. it doesn't matter if you don't make it, you just practice a bit, then you do it. You know, she yeah. was very much casual like that. And if you made a drawing that was not really... 
just fix it, just draw over it, and it'll be all right, don't worry about it. So it was a lot of that, and uh, so in that sense, it was really cool. Mm -hmm. They didn't know everything I was up to when I was a teenager, but I told them yeah. now, but uh, <laughs> I told them some of the things now. So yeah. I, I was very adventurous and, and hung, hung out on the wrong side of the motorway, you know, with, where I met John and, and all those guys. I don't, mm -hmm. But um, I had a fun start in my life, I think. Um, my brother was one year younger. We used to play a lot. And my sister was four years older. But, you know, it was yeah. okay. And then I met John when I was 14, 15, and then... Uh, it's just music. Yeah. 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 That sounds like a yeah. really good. Uh, well, yeah. yeah. There was, there was incidents <laughs> nice here. And there was incidents here and there, but yes. it's nothing to you know bring up here. Yeah. <laughs> but in general, it's been pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I think we had that was actually like the third album. Just like oh, in yeah. general, you have your third uh, Europe, the breakthrough, but mainly third albums. Third albums everybody says that they're, they're, they're big it. and important. Yeah. I suppose they were because in the old days, the, the record company would would sign you for maybe five albums. I mean, yeah, it was they wanted to actually be with you for a longer time, and yeah. the third album tended to be this is when we push it, you know. Yeah. But it was more of a coincidence for us, you know. Did you see it coming then, the big success at the time? Or no, totally we, we were already a touring band with Wins of Tomorrow. We started touring in Scandinavia and Japan, and and we, we got to record in a proper studio, Wings of Tomorrow, with mm -hmm. large studios where Led Zeppelin had been, and then Scorpions, Love at First Thing, First Sessions were there as well. So we recorded Wings of Tomorrow, and we were sort of on our way, and there was there were songs of Wings of Tomorrow that people got to hear. Mm -hmm that got assigned to New York, uh, CBS, for this record. And so we have a lot to thank for Wings of Tomorrow, our second album. Okay. But they introduced Kevin Nelson as a producer, Journey's producer, and uh, Mr. Big and stuff like that. And we did this together with him. And uh, I suppose songwriting, we, we were taking it to the limit. Um, and, and also we... Um, Keyboards had came, come into the music stores. So yeah. We were always hanging in music stores, oh. picking guitars and amps and whatever. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, Japan and America had developed keyboards, beginning of the 80s. And we wanted to fill out the space when John played solo live. So we had, sometimes I played a little keyboard very early on. And on the records we put them. So that's how I started experimenting with keyboards. That's mm -hmm. why Final Countdown came, because as a writer, you, you use tools to write. Exactly. It could be a new yeah. guitar, it could be, it could be a movie you see, it could be a keyboard. So that was more of a coincidence that would, that, um, that I tried those Korgs and Roland since, um, and Edmund Hale did the same with the Oberheim, with the American mm -hmm. keyboard, and did Jump. Yeah. And I suppose the Norwegians, Aha, did the same with their keyboards, with, with Take On Me. So it, it was a period where we, as writers, explored the possibilities of keyboards. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it turned was, out good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was good. I mean, that yeah. was inter it's an interesting song. I mean, it's over, Frank Hampton is over six minutes long. It was never meant to be any hit or anything. It was meant to be an opener for a show. Uh -huh. a live show, that yeah. was the idea. Yeah. But after just one tour, everybody was, this is becoming big, you have to play it last, you can't open with it. So it's like, oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> this was meant to be an opener, and I had yeah. to give up in the end, and now obviously yeah. we have to play it at the end, you know. Oh. Yeah, and it's still haunting you. <laughs> yeah, I still want to open with it, but... Yeah, yeah. well, it's, it's like that. So, any most excessive stuff you did during the really top peaking period uh, with the band? Uh, yeah, the cra uh, we're, we're not that stuff. excessive people really. Well, I know the bass player bought a big boat and crashed it. It was, it was oh. one of those racing boats and they bought cars. And that thing. But, but no, um, mm -hmm. I, I was quite reserved. I, I got a... The, we did a crazy thing. We moved away from Sweden. We moved to the Caribbean Islands. Oh. That's crazy enough for you. <laughs> so we lived in, in uh, was that? we lived in Turks yeah. and Caicos for a few years, uh, quite a few years, and then we moved back. I moved back to London and Ireland. I moved to Ireland as well. Mm -hmm. So the craziest thing for me is that I've just been moving around where I want to go, where I, where I just where the wind leads me. Really, mm -hmm. I, I remember hearing Waterboys, and, and I wanted to go and record my first solo album in in, uh, in Dublin, um, where and, and I went to visit all the studios where U2 was recording and the Waterboys and. And and I and I lived and I moved to Ireland for a while because I was so fascinated with the spiritual music and everything. Uh, that's how my life has been, more or less. And then mm -hmm. fell in love with London, and uh, now I have my family there, so everything. So I'm stuck there now. Thank, Thank you, you for watching Headbangers, Headbangers Lifestyle. Lifestyle.